she you said uh, so he, he couldn't call her. He's with us. She's, yeah. yeah, he, uh, she's got uh, pneumonia. She's with us. I have no idea. No. I'm not, I don't even know what hospital she's in. I gotta go, Gary. I'm gonna get my check. I'll see you. Bye bye. Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on this Christmas Eve Eve. I'm Greg Glover. Cindy has the night off. It was a magical night for children in McMinn County. Several housing projects received a special stop from Santa Claus. New at 11, Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Sarah Sidery tells us why Santa's quick visit was extra special for some residents. Some families told us they will not have a Christmas this year, but a stop from Santa shows them somebody still cares. I heard the sirens and then at first we thought something bad happened, but then we heard holiday music and so I started running through the neighborhood screaming, Santa's here! Special visits from Santa himself, making stops in neighborhoods across Athens. Hi there! Surprising kids and their parents, too. I'm like, are you guys not excited? It's Santa Claus. And I gathered up all the kids I could so we could run up here and just attack and love Santa. We love you, Santa. You're welcome. Thank you. While the sleigh gets prepped for its Christmas Eve flight, a white pickup truck drove Santa to several housing projects across town. There you go, sweetie. It's a miracle. And we hand out candy canes to kids and we talk to them. So they get a little taste of Santa coming early. Merry Christmas. And what I really want is to see you on Christmas Eve. For some families, this is Santa's only stop this year. We're not doing much this year for Christmas. We have a little Christmas tree, but that's it. But no matter how many presents are under the tree, smiles like these are the greatest gifts. It's nice to have something good happen around the neighborhood, you know. We don't get it often, so it's a real pleasure. It's a real treat, especially around the holidays. Santa will make more stops in Athens tomorrow night in the City Park and Ingleside neighborhoods. In the studio, Sarah Sidery, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. There may be a Grinch trying to steal Christmas in East Ridge. One man witnessed his Christmas packages being stolen right off his porch. His neighbor's security cameras caught the suspect in action. Now police need your help to track down the bad guy. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Tanisha Cordell has more. Police say they aren't sure who's taking multiple Christmas packages in the East Ridge area, but residents say they're hoping they put a stop to it. After finishing work, I got a a uh, knock on the door from our neighbor, Terrell. He uh, asked if I had a package stolen. I was like, well, I was expecting two today, but they're not here, but it says they were delivered. On Thursday around 5 p.m., Adam Stalker and his family realized they were missing Christmas gifts. He says it's a frustrating reality to face just two days away from the holiday. His neighbor's surveillance video shows someone running house to house, taking items from several homes along South St. Mark's Avenue. You then see the person's shadow in Stalker's yard right before they took two Amazon packages from his front porch. 
He says the packages included a surprise book for his daughter and a gag gift for him. At least after talking to Amazon, they were able to get the most important gift to us tomorrow and we're sending that actually now to my wife's work so we don't have to worry about it getting stolen again. But this isn't the first time a Grinch tried to steal Christmas from the stalkers. Two years ago we had two packages stolen on different days. Uh, we actually had a Blu-ray player that my mother-in-law was having delivered here and it it was stolen. Amazon did another repl a replacement for us. The second one was stolen. After Thursday's theft, Stalker says he called police and reported it, hoping to learn more about the crime. And the police came out and said that there were uh, other neighbors in the uh, neighborhood that had also been stolen. East Ridge police say four thefts were reported Thursday all around or after 6 p.m. They say the suspect also targeted homes on Maryland Drive and Fountain Avenue. Stalker believes living near an interstate with easy access to on and off ramps is to blame. It's why he's considering moving his family from their home of nine years. I worry about our kids, providing a safe place for them, and I just feel we can't really do that very well here anymore. But he says this won't stop his family from having a merry Christmas this year. This doesn't ruin Christmas because it's not about the gifts. Eastridge police tell me there is no suspect in custody and there's no official description available at this time, but they are planning to keep an eye out on the area over the weekend. In Eastridge, Tanisha Cordell, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. In continuing coverage tonight, we hear from a man working near the Chattanooga airport who found three dogs dead on the side of the road this week. Larry Marler found the dogs on Lovell Field Loop. It was a male, female pit bull and a pit bull puppy about eight months old. It appears the dogs had starved to death and they were dumped on the side of the road by whomever owned them. All three dogs had collars, but no tags or microchips. Now McCamey Animal Center is offering a reward for the arrest of the person or persons responsible. My heart sank. I, I have two dogs. Uh, to see somebody do that to a dog is just, he had no chance. You know, none of them did. It took a while for them to get emaciated. Um, so somebody had to see these three dogs um, in someone's backyard and, and they're no longer there. Newcomb there says evidence shows the dogs had been dead for less than 24 hours before they were found. McCamey's offering $3,000 reward for information. There is more information about this case on our website, WRCBTV.com. Channel 3's learned the driver in the deadly Woodmore bus, uh, school bus crash had previous accidents and infractions in his personnel file. 24-year-old Jonathan A. Walker hit a cement barrier as he made a right turn in August. Then in September, bus driver sideswiped a Kia on a two-lane road. After those crashes, Walker was given additional training and passed a behind-the-wheel evaluation before he returned to his route. Still Durham School Officials Services CEO, his name's David Duke, says nothing in the file merited termination before the November 21st crash. The mother of an East Hamilton Middle School student hit by a car is now suing the driver. Nancy Tominelli filed the lawsuit on behalf of her 13-year-old son, Daniel. He suffered critical injuries when a car driven by Tamisha Dixon hit him as he got out of a vehicle on Ringgold Road in East Ridge. Daniel spent three weeks in Chattanooga Hospital before he was transported to a rehabilitation center in Atlanta. Lawsuit states Dixon violated several traffic laws and they've asked for a jury to hear the case. If you're traveling for Christmas, be prepared for traffic. AAA predicts more than 100 million Americans will travel this weekend. that will make it the busiest travel season on record. This year's holiday travel period runs through January 2nd. If you're traveling through Tennessee or Georgia for the holidays, some good news. Both departments of transportation are limiting construction and lane closures, trying to make it easier and safer for all of us out there. Paul Bear standing by to see what kind of weather we're getting into for hitting the road. It's 1107, time for first weather. Hey, Paul. Well, it's going to be dry the rest of tonight, but we are going to see some showers Saturday, especially if you're driving north to Knoxville, you're driving north to Nashville. If you're driving south to Atlanta, it's probably going to be dry. Uh, for tomorrow, but it's going to be a warm Christmas day and for much of next week it looks like it's going to be quite mild. Now the clouds have been moving in and out throughout the evening. All the rain's off to the north and out to the west out of West Tennessee. These showers will gradually push our way, but it's going to be moving into some drier air, so it's going to take a while for the atmosphere to really saturate before these rain showers can, can hit the, uh, the ground. 
And there are even a few thunderstorms out along the Mississippi and up into the Ohio with this. I doubt if we'll have any thunder or lightning here, though. Well, winds are out of light and out of the south right now. It's 53 in Cleveland, 53 in Dalton, and 52 in the city. 51 Athens and Murphy, and 54 out near Fort Payne. Our high today was 61, 30, 60, overnight low, not a drop of rain at the airport. And sky watchers told me temperatures in the 60s south of the city, all over the place, except for the Blue Ridge, where it was 58 up in Blue Ridge in Fannin County, 56 in LJ. Then we had 61 in Cleveland and 60 up in Dunlap. While it was only 50 up on Mowbray Mountain, 55 Signal Mountain, and 56 Lookout Mountain. And even Ringgold, Johnny Parks, up on his little hill near Ringgold said 59. Oodlewa and East Ridge were 60. Well, Turtletown was 62. And also in Murphy, about 60 degrees. Pikeville, 60 and about 62 degrees out near Jasper. Here's a brand new Vipercast showing what's going to happen around 8 o'clock in the morning. The light green is very light rain. The darker green is some moderate rain. So it's going to start to spread north and west of the city and then push down rapidly. And by about 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow or 6 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, uh, most of the rain showers will be over with, except for a few sprinkles here and there. And then the showers, again, sprinkles by 11 o'clock. So tomorrow night, not that much rain. As a matter of fact, completely ends. By Sunday, this is Christmas morning, uh, the clouds will start to thin out a little bit. We'll see some sunshine, and that's going to let the temperatures really rise. And we're going to have a little bit of a southeasterly wind, too, coming up by Monday at around 1 o'clock in the morning for the overnight. Now, Vipercast is not very aggressive on this rain. It's only holding it to a uh, tenth of an inch or less from Chattanooga it's on southward and maybe about a tenth of an inch from the city to maybe about two or three or four tenths at the very most north of the city. So this is not going to be a big rainmaker at all. And south of the city may be nothing at all. Graysville 54 for tomorrow with a chance for some showers and uh, Ridgeside less of a chance and about 56 for that high. So for tonight those low temperatures will not be zero. Those low temperatures are going to be dropping down only into the upper 40s. 56 for tomorrow with showers and southerly winds. Uh, for tomorrow night, 49, partly cloudy skies. And then on the seven-day forecast, again, to see that low, 47, Saturday morning, uh, tomorrow morning. 56 again Saturday, Christmas Day, yes, 72 degrees. And uh, that's about as spring-like as you can get this time of year. 64 coming up on Monday and uh, probably some showers on Tuesday with about 64 degrees. Wednesday should be dry and 60. A little bit cooler on Thursday, another round of showers moves in, but nothing really heavy. And by Monday, much cooler and about 48 degrees. For the New Year's weekend, it looks like uh, temperatures started near normal. That is an amazing week to mm -hmm. round out the year, Paul. That's right. Thank you very much. Now to some breaking news. Chattanooga police are investigating a shooting on North Moore Road. The shooting actually happened just after 730. Police say they found a person suffering the gunshot wound. The victim was taken to the hospital. They are stable. No information about the actual suspect was provided, but they believe that the person was driving a dark colored Ford Escape SUV. If you know anything about this shooting on Northmore Road, please call the Chattanooga police. Up next on Eyewitness News at 11, the suspected driver who killed and wounded so many in a truck attack in Berlin is dead after a shootout with police. Plus, President-elect Donald Trump continued his talk about nuclear weapons today, putting Russia and other countries on notice. The full story, next. Hey Chattanooga, this is Ellis Smith at the Chattanooga Times Free Press, and this weekend we're bringing you all things Christmas. So whether it's seeing Christmas lights, it's your last chance to see those, or seeing Santa, the reindeer, Frosty, this is it. So we'll let you know how to do all that, including restaurants that are still going to be open for Christmas. That and more at timesfreepress.com. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Young from Al Udeed Air Base in Qatar. I want to say happy holidays to my husband Jeremy and my family in Georgia.
President-elect Donald Trump has gotten the world's attention after declaring today, quote, let it be an arms race, unquote, following his tweet yesterday about the U.S. needing to strengthen its nuclear arsenal. Trump's comments followed some tough talk by Russia's president about increasing his country's nuclear power. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has this story. A cold war of words between President-elect Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin after both leaders called for expanding their nuclear arsenals. Today, Mr. Trump had an off-camera conversation with MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski, telling her... Let it be an arms race. We will outmatch them at every pass. While those words grabbed the world's attention, Trump enjoyed a casual golf outing with Tiger Woods. His incoming press secretary tried to clarify. The president isn't saying we're going to do this. He said unless they come to their senses. It's a warning to them that this president's going to take well, action. Doubled down. Both leaders yesterday called for their countries to strengthen their nuclear capabilities. But today, Putin told reporters if someone accelerates and speeds up the arms race, it's not us. Something as complex uh, and important as nuclear weapons strategy cannot be communicated in the course of 140 characters in a Twitter message. Uh, this is not how uh, serious American presidents uh, should be behaving. Trump today released a week-old Christmas letter from Putin who expressed hope for more cooperation between the two countries, prompting a less confrontational response from Trump, saying a very nice letter from Vladimir Putin. I hope both sides are able to live up to these thoughts and we do not have to travel an alternate path. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. The search for the prime suspect in Monday's attack on a Christmas market in Berlin, Germany is over. At least Interior Minister says that without a shadow of a doubt, the suspect was killed in Italy. Italian news agency ANSA reports that the suspect was killed in a shootout with police in Milan overnight. The police force says they were conducting a routine check when they asked the suspect for his identity papers. He reportedly pulled a gun from his backpack and was killed in the ensuing shootout. Residents of Berlin and visitors, too, continued paying their respects at the site of that truck attack that killed 12 people. They came to offer flowers and candles, prayers and thoughts at the makeshift memorial to the victims. A heavy police presence could be seen patrolling between the stalls there. When we come back, keep a critical eye. A new survey shows 12% of consumers will receive a counterfeit gift when we unrest presents this weekend. Carrie Fisher is in critical condition after she suffered a serious heart attack. We'll bring you more details when we get back.
With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. Actress Carrie Fisher was rushed to the hospital today after suffering a massive heart attack on a plane. Fisher was en route from London to Los Angeles when she went into full cardiac arrest. She was given CPR on board and taken to the hospital as soon as the plane landed in L.A. Family members say Fisher is, quote, out of emergency, unquote, and stabilized, but remains in critical condition. She's 60 years old. Carrie Fisher is best known for her role as Princess Leia in the original Star Wars trilogy. Several restaurants will be open on Christmas Day to serve consumers something other than the traditional meal at home. Denny's will be serving meals all 24 hours of Christmas Day with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Last year, Denny's welcomed 1.6 million guests on Christmas, making it the diner's busiest day for the sixth consecutive year. Starbucks will be open with hours varying by location. Waffle House will also be open on Christmas Day. There will be a lot of flakes under the tree this year. A new survey shows surprising stats about counterfeit products. About a quarter of consumers have been duped into unknowingly purchasing a counterfeit item. This is according to a new report from Mark Monitor. The survey found that about 18% of us have knowingly purchased a fake. 12% would give a counterfeit item as a gift to avoid being scammed. Beware of deep discounts and check the return policy before you buy. You better watch out. You better not speed. You'd better slow down. Telling you why. In Maine, it's not just police officers watching out for speeders. It's also Santa. Have a look at this sign on I-295. Proof the big guy in red's watching your speed as well. Chances are violators might not only get a costly speeding ticket, could end up on the naughty list too. Just ahead of Eyewitness News at 11, a big night for high school hoops in our area. Jill Jelling has highlights from the best of preps basketball tournament when we come back. Yeah, it's that time of the year where area high school, local high school basketball teams It's that time of the year where local high school basketball teams compete under the same roof for three days and try to earn bragging rights for the rest of the year. You know what I'm talking about, the best of preps high school basketball tournament. And tonight was championship Friday. First on the boys side, the Brainerd Panthers and the Macaulay Blue Tornado made it to the finale at Chat State. Macaulay looking to defend its title from last year jumped out to a 6-2 lead thanks to this three by Junior Clay. But then Brainerd scores eight points in a row, including that short jumper by Jardiri 
Darius Menefi to give the Panthers a four point lead. McCauley keeps up with them though. Max Schulman in the paint sneaks one by to trip Butler for the easy bucket. McCauley trailing by just two. Shortly after they would tie it up and Junior Clay makes a nice move under the rim there. McCauley now back on top. The Blue Tornado led 44 to 38 at the half. And well, they would take it from there. McCauley goes on to win it 70 to 57 and is your best of preps tournament champs for the second year in a row. Now there was a familiar face in the girls best of preps championship game tonight. The Baylor Red Raiders have been the tournament champs the last four years in a row, trying to make it a fifth tonight over their rival GPS. Baylor led for most of the first half. GPS freshman Meg Priest trying to get the bruisers up, takes one to the basket herself to put GPS within nine. But then Maya Long finds a wide open Caroline Keller under the basket for an easy two points to put the Raiders back up by double digits. Bruisers then get a rally going as junior Brooke McGurdy sinks the triple to bring it within eight with a minute left in the third period. But Baylor's Maya Long and Jorteria Willis just couldn't be stopped tonight as the Baylor Red Raiders go on to win their fifth straight best of preps tournament 43 to 30 that final. Well, along with building his staff, Mock's new head football coach Tom Arth said he would talk to current and incoming players as soon as possible. But maybe soon wasn't soon enough, at least for one commit. Franklin Road Academy O-lineman Jack Daughtery tweeted this last night saying, I am re-evaluating my commitment to UTC due to changes at the school. I will be looking at all of my options, but UTC is still a top choice. Now, in Russ Huseman's final press conference, he did say he would not try to bring any recruits with him to Richmond. But after that tweet last night, Jack tweeted again, he tweeted this. He had just received an offer from the Spiders. Whether that was Huseman's doing, who knows? What we do know, though, is that the Mocs currently have 10 high school players committed for the 2017 signing class. Two from our area include Bradley Central quarterback Cole Copeland there, and then Walker Valley wide receiver Bryce Nunley. Baylor grad Nick Tiano, who spent the last two seasons at Mississippi State, announced his transfer to UTC recently as well. Arth made sure to note that the players in the surrounding areas would be his main focus. You know, the most important thing to me um, is going to be the state of Tennessee. You know, there's just so much great football here. Um, that's another reason why this is such an exciting opportunity is because you don't have to go very far. Uh, Chattanooga is located in such an incredible um, place. You know, we're not going to have to go very far to go find the right players um, that fit um, you know, our program and fit what we're looking for. Now, is it too early for a little Braves baseball? Uh, I don't know. David Carroll wouldn't think so. I know that. And Braves fans will be happy about this news. Atlanta center fielder Ender Enciarte agreed to a 30 million five year contract today. The deal covers four years of arbitration and one year of free agency and gives Atlanta a club option for 2022. He had a pretty good season this last season. I know he earned his first gold glove. Um, in the National League just this last Big year. Big time. And of course, the Braves will be playing at that new stadium. I haven't oh, seen any man. construction pictures yet. I'm sure it's nearly complete. They're working on it. And Maybe we need to get that in. And that would be idea. a nice look. At, and during the SEC yeah. uh, football finals, they took a, a shot from the sky of Aerial the shot. Georgia Dome and the, the new stadium there coming <sighs> under construction. Right. And it's looking amazing. Good. Right there. So awesome. Atlanta's got a lot of stuff going on right yeah, now. No a lot of big money. Paul Bears has your seven day forecast when we get back.
Showers will be moving in tomorrow, but uh, the best chance of the rain is going to be in Tennessee. From now, right across the Georgia border, you may get some showers, but further south of Dalton, it's going to be tough to get any type of rain. And temperatures will be climbing into the mid to upper 50s, and then 72 on Christmas Day. Unbelievable. 64 on Monday, and then on Tuesday, some rain and more showers coming up on Thursday. Tomorrow, not that much rain, maybe a quarter inch at the most. Paul, thank you. We end tonight with a Christmas miracle in the form of a balloon that almost found its way to Santa Claus. Six-year-old Keani Page of Lafayette, Louisiana, released the balloon in the air the night before Thanksgiving. She attached a letter to Santa. She was asking for a tablet, some light-up shoes, and a turtle. <laughs> Four days later, Rachel Goffinett found the balloon and the note nearly 800 miles away at Evanston, wow. Indiana, about 10 miles wow. south of the town of what? Santa Claus. <laughs> Goffinett said she put on her elf hat and decided to help the real Santa Claus out because she knew he was busy. Keanu's mom called it a blessing. I thought it was it was awesome, but I thought it would have just come right back down. I never thought it would make it the way where it did. To get her what she had asked for is something that we wanted to do for another family this year. Well, it's perfect. Caffinette wrapped the presents. She says she tracked down the page's address with help from Keanu's mom and school. Keanu opened her presents earlier today. And you see, you were wondering about the turtle, I know. Yeah. It's not a real one, <laughs> but one that's easier to take care of. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Have a wonderful weekend.